Hello PHP Storm friends. In this video, we're talking about PHP Storm again, of course, but specifically in combination with Laravel. Laravel is an amazing PHP framework. A lot of people use it and it provides a dozen of features that help you to develop your applications. Still, some of those features are not that easy to understand for an IDE like PHP Storm. So today we want to take a look at what we can do to help PHP Storm to better understand your Laravel applications. In the meantime, Laravel 7 was released, so we changed this project to a new Laravel 7 project. And just to make sure, let's call the Addison command to get the current version. And yeah, we're using 7.17.2. First, let's talk about facades in Laravel. I'm here in my routes file, and you can see that I'm using here this route facade. And it's a pretty easy way and easy syntax like this one here to use an underlying functionality of Laravel. So this means when we get when we go to this route here, to this class, you can see that this is a facade, and here we don't have any functionality we can use. So for example, this get method here that we use in our routes file is not inside this facade class. This is because this is just a so-called proxy to get to an underlying class that we're actually using. And through this method here, we can find the key where to find this actual class inside the service container. But in this video, we don't want to concentrate on how facades work. If you're more interested in that, I'm going to provide a link to a video I've done about facades where you can check out how they work and how you can use them. But for us, good to know is that we're using here facade and this is why it's hard for our IDE to understand um, what functionality we can use. But as we type here methods, you can see that we get some of the methods that we can use like this get method here or the any or the post method. And this is because inside the facade, there is now a pretty big doc block here which tells us or tells your IDE what are the methods that you can use. And here, for example, is this get method that we are actually using. So this means this doc block helps our IDE to better understand what methods we can use. And this is pretty cool because in the past we didn't have these doc blocks here and then it was much more difficult. Still, it's not the easy to find out which actual class we're using when running this method here. So before these stock blocks, we needed to use a package to help us with that. And this package is called, let me show you, it's by Barry and it's called, yeah, the level IDE helper package. And it helps to generate information about your application in a file that PHPStorm can read. Okay, so let's do this. PHP Artisan IDE helper and the method is called generate. And this is specifically for facades. So what we get now here is a new file in our project. Here it is. And it provides information about all the facades and like the methods that we can use. So this means now if I go back to my routes file and if I again go to this method here, um, we have two locations. First, first is the facade. But if we go now to this helper file, we can directly see, okay, this get method is connected to this instance and this is an instance of the router. So if I now click here to go to this declaration, we can easily go to the router. And inside here now we have the get method that we are actually using. So this is even a pretty cooler than before because now we can go directly here and this is why I also have this helper package always installed in my application. Another topic is Laravel models. So Laravel has Eloquent as an ORM and it implements the active record pattern. And this also means that all the model fields are defined through your migration and through database columns. You can access all of the fields just by calling them. So if we create here a new user, Let's do this, we can access like the ID or the name and all of these fields our PHP Storm IDE has no idea about because here yeah, they are not part of the user model itself. 
Still, you can access them like this. But with Barry's IDE helper, there is another comment that we can run and it's called models. So here we get asked if we want to add this information, this new information to the modeling files itself or to a different um, general file. I like to have them in my models. So if we go now to our user, you can see it here that we also have a long doc block here with all the information about uh, methods that we can use, about the query builder that we're using, but also about the fields of our user, like the ID, the name, the email. And this means now that we get auto completion for our models. Like you see here, we have the name, the ID, the email, and this is maybe not that helpful in a small project, but if you're working in a big project where you don't know all the fields and the columns of your table, this gets really handy. Also, if you go to a new project where you didn't implement the um, database yourself. So besides this IDE helper package, there are also some level plugins for PHP Storm that can help us. So when we go to the plugins, Here we are, you can see that I have already installed the level plugin by Daniel and it's already activated, but we now also need to activate it for our current project. And we can do this here. So when I go back now to my route file, I have here already prepared two facades like the redirect action method. So this redirects us to a specific method of a controller. And usually you need to provide here a string, but now we get also auto completion here by these suggestions. So we can go to the about method or the home method like this, or if we want to get something from the config, and um, we also get here this nice list of things like, yeah, you know, like this aliases and even more that we can just get from this list. And also I can directly go here through the go to declaration. Um, functionality in PHP Storm and the same goes here for these um, aliases that I have been using here. So that's pretty cool and this helps a lot because yeah there are many features in Laravel where you can provide these strings here and now this makes them, this plugin makes them even easier to use. Okay and next to this plugin there is also another one. So let's go to our plugins page again. And you can see that I have also already installed the level ideal plugin. Oh, but let's first um, deactivate the other one. Uh, here we go. And now let's go to the plugins again. Yeah, so here is the second level plugin called level idea. And I have already installed it and now I need to activate it. And by the way, you have to pay for this one. And um, this one is not for free, but it provides a lot of features. So um, this is really interesting and let me show you. Okay, I need to restart now. Okay, so now that this plugin is activated, we have this new level idea code generation comment. And this provides us with this prompt here where we can do a lot of stuff. So for example, we can create any kind of level files, like a test, feature test, unit test, like a model, like a controller. Oh, this is nice one because for this, we can also define, yeah, we want to make a single action controller. And this now, let's just do this, create a new user controller. You can see that we now also have this invoke method. So this is pretty cool. And with all these different templates that you can um, create with a Laravel Idea plugin, you also have here all of these templates and you can just adapt them to your needs. So if you use any different style, just go there and adapt them. I really like that you have this possibility here as well. Okay, and next to this feature with all this code generation, you can also generate eloquent helper code. So this is similar to the IDE helper package before, but this provides us some different features. So let's do this. It just takes a few seconds. 
And now let's go back to our user. So now this is really cool. So when we go down here now to our fillable array, for example, oh, by the way, um, the file that was created here is also IDE helper models file. And now if we go here to our fillable array, for example, back, and I get suggestions for um, the fields of a model. So if you type in a new field, you get the password field here, for example. Or um, when you have casts, let's take a field like the name. There it is. And then we want to make it, I don't know, like a date time. It doesn't make sense. But you get auto completion for all the types that are available for casts. Now, this is pretty impressive. And another example is let's go to our page controller. So let's take this request object that we get here and let's validate the data. And we can provide here our rules as an array. So for example, let's take the name and now we get suggestions for the rules. So yeah, let's make it required. What else? Let's make it unique or a string. And this now works for all your fields. So let's take the what else do I have the email? Let's make the email also required. And now we're going to do an array. So we want to make it required. We want to make it an email. And now this also works. And yeah, this is how this package can help you with a lot of new auto completion features and code generation. So I think this is pretty cool. And some of these features, like here, like validation, is something that you wouldn't expect from a plugin. So I really like that, but of course it is paid. So yeah, check out this plugin and see if it could help you as well. So this was it for this video. We have taken a look at what are some of these magic features that Laravel provides, but are hard to understand for IDE. And then we took a look at packages like the IDE helper package, the Laravel plugin or the Laravel IDE plugin that all try to help your IDE to better understand your level code and specifically those features that are not that easy to understand and provide auto completion where you usually wouldn't expect them. It is worth taking some time to play with these available plugins and yeah to level up your setup and I hope I could give you a nice introduction on how to do this. Have fun with these plugins and see you next time.